serious lawyers, what's a case you regretted winning? As a personal injury attorney, I've seen a few clients win the blue collar lotto or getting more money than they reasonably know how to deal with. I do my best to educate them. But my job is to try and maximize their recovery. Not teach them finance. I have definitely contributed to a few drug habits. The one where the client never paid. Backslash edit. Clarification slash explanation. When I was a young associate, I was assigned to do a civil commercial trial for a client that was not happy with a senior partner. He stopped paying. We moved to withdraw. The court refused to allow us to withdraw and forced us to go to trial. Spend a significant amount of time in trial prep, etc. I win the trial. Client never pays. Client's position was that my boss screwed up the deal and that there never should have been a dispute slash trial to begin with. Firm policy prohibits us from suing clients because that causes a drastic increase in malpractice premiums 9 times out of 10 if you sue a client for non-payment. They will counter suit for malpractice backslash. Women wanted her daughter custody. We used the state preference about custody going to the mother, judge bias. Her improved economical situation and some minor garbage like her grades and discipline problems at school to discredit the dad not even a month after we won the mother calls and says she had a problem. Then she explains the problem was that her BF raped the girl and after that she had the gall to ask we pick up his defense on of the things that made me quit to gov work. Guy lost his wife and children in a car accident. He wanted to exercise to get his emotions and mental health back in check. Doctor wrote him recommendations for exercise equipment, ball chin-up bar. Nothing crazy, and he submitted the expenses for same to his insurer. Client, insurer slash adjuster, wanted this fought tooth and nail because exercise equipment was only covered for physical rehab and he was not physically injured. I do not practice in this area anymore. There was a case that I saw that involved a claim with fee shifting, meaning that if the plaintiff won, their attorney's fees would get paid by the defendant. Defendant pushed an aggressive legal position at trial that the judge agreed with. And won. Avoiding a few thousand in liability to the plaintiff and a few thousand in attorney's fees. So far so good. But then the plaintiff appeals all the way to the state's high court. Requiring a ton of briefing and time. High court agrees with plaintiff. Reverses and sends back to the trial court. Which now enters judgment against the defendant for a few thousand in damages against the plaintiff and tens and tens of thousands of dollars in attorney's fees from the appeal. The defense lawyer probably regretted winning at first on that aggressive argument to the trial court. I did some custody work early in my career and won some cases more on the merit of my trial skills than on the merit of the parents. The thing with family law work in general is that there is essentially no bar to entry. Anybody with a law degree and a pulse can get a family law practice up and running quickly because there is just an absolute glut of work. What that also means is that 75% plus of the lawyers practicing family law are clueless and awful. Early in my career I certainly was clueless. But at the least I was not awful. Therefore, in a battle between clueless and awful versus just clueless, clueless usually won. So yeah, I can't recall any specific cases. Except to say that fighting over children in court is a terrible thing and basically everyone loses. I regret that entire portion of my career. I won a summary judgment motion. That my firm filed not expecting to win. We had a decent argument. But odds were way worse than a coin flip and judges don't like granting summary judgment because it's an extreme remedy. Client initially was thrilled case is over dash we try to break the news gently. Nope. Three years later we are back in the same spot we were before we won our motion. The other side appealed it up to the state supreme court and won, because the supreme court said the trial judge should have denied our motion. So, we are back at square one. North of $100,000 in legal bills. With no resolution. Maybe it'll settle. Maybe it will go to trial. I'll find out in the next three to four months. EDA clarified my parenthetical. I wouldn't say I regret this so much as to this day it amazes me. As a first year associate I was given a, terrible, pie case where my client received a flu shot and thereafter felt pain in his shoulder. He went to another doctor who performed an MRI and determined he had a torn rotator cuff. Which was undoubtedly not related. 
My job was to allege the flu shot caused the rotator cuff tear. Our ortho actually correlated the two, which is the more regrettable position, and the case paid out. Being the bottom of the totem pole I had no choice but to take the case. Which was handed down by a partner. But at the same time. Just overwhelmingly made me feel like the worst stereotyped attorney and just hated having to walk into court on it and feel my reputation being destroyed. I do family law and I represented a father who had lost most of his custody from heroin use and imprisonment as a result. He came to me saying he was clean and doing good and had his life together and it checked out. He had been clean for almost 9 months not counting jail time and seemed sincere in wanting to resume a full relationship with his son. The other side fought viciously to keep him at extremely little custody and supervised at that. But we prevailed and got an order restoring fairly frequent unsupervised partial custody. Not long afterwards, only about three months after the case, he was back doing heroin, sold most of his furniture. And for me the most soul crushing is that he set up a fake GoFundMe stuff for his child's cancer. His child didn't have cancer and has never had cancer so you know where that money was going. I withdrew my appearance at this point so I don't know what happened afterwards. But I imagine and hope his custody was taken away. Basically the net result of winning that case was that the poor boy had to witness his father relapse on heroin and was exploited for money. Worst case I ever won. Settled a personal injury case for a guy and he was set to get about $5,000. He was in jail. I held the money for a couple months and when he got out he came by to get the money without delay. The next day the cops came around and asked if I knew him. I explained that I did. I was told he died that night of an overdose and the only thing found on him was my card. Some drugs he had not yet used. And a needle. If you win a case you are not supposed to win under the law. It means that the judge or the other attorney screwed up. And it's difficult to feel bad about that. It also means that the decision likely will be appealed. Which makes it hard to get excited about an upset win. Source. AM Lawyer. Shadowed on a personal injury case. Their client was drinking in one of our guys bars and gets wasted. Becomes abusive to staff and then storms out. Falls down the stairs. C6 Asia B incomplete spinal injury severe loss of mobility and sensation. His people sue and we force them to accept contributory negligence and personal liability. He gets an okay payout that covers his legal fees and immediate needs and is left disabled. Even if it was seen to be his fault it was still hard thinking that his life will never be the same just because of one rowdy night. Spinal injury care is massively expensive and the money he received wouldn't be sufficient for his whole life. The one I particular hated happened at my first law job. This woman was a long term client of my boss. In the past 10 years or so. She has been caught driving under the influence 8 times. Violated home incarceration countless times been caught with controlled substances a few times and stabbed two people on home incarceration my boss at the time was the master of getting people off for duis so she had only been convicted of a dui third and always managed to stay on home incarceration with whatever releases she desired i always regretted her cases because that woman is truly a danger to the public she's undoubtedly going to kill someone someday but it'll be damned if she isn't the luckiest woman alive in getting away with duis my client made a lot of promises to his staff and never had planned to keep them. Was sued. 1. I hated every second of the case. Guy was a convicted felon so couldn't be in possession of any firearms. He pawned two guns that were traced back to him by the pawn shop paperwork. He said they were his and put his thumbprint on the papers. Also had store clerks say he walked in carrying them. His story was that his girlfriend's mom found them after her father died. They were his, and wanted to get rid of them. So girlfriend, also convicted felon, asked him to help sell them. Which he did. The office refused to waive the three-year min-man prison sentence. So it went to trial. I was the prosecutor when it went and ultimately got a guilty. The guy had to do three years day for day. I felt bad because I think his story was true. But he had a conviction for armed robbery and sexual battery from 30 years ago so that was why the office wouldn't agree to reduce the sentence.